<laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, I hope this is working. You know, you practice and you you think that you understand how all of the technical technological blah, 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 stuff works. And then once again, like the microphone or the computer or the software or the something like always goes awry. So here we are. It's 304. Everything is fine. Thank you for joining. Um, my name is Evita, and this is a live stream on behalf of syncopatedcity.com, um, which is an online uh, platform that Michael Jagger, my husband Simon Powis, and myself have uh, for Lindy Hop lessons. And we've been doing these really cool, uh, I hope they're cool, uh, live streams with our dear friends uh, who are artists, dancers, musicians, in an attempt to support and help them out during this um, difficult time. Uh, and hopefully it's also just entertaining and, and positive fun stuff for you at home watching. Um, so my special guest today is Gabby Cook. And uh, she's a very dear friend of mine. We've worked together now for several years here in New York City. And our topic today is You Better Work, which is focusing on how to make good shapes and lines for dance, but also specifically for photos. And um, yeah, and that's kind of a big interest to all of us in this day and age of social media where you know, photos are being shared and used as advertising and promotion. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so let's call Gabby and um, everybody just kind of be patient with me as I once again try to make sure that, that everything is working. Hi, Jaren, good to see you. It's 10 p.m. I think where you are, you said thank you for sharing our story and uh, I'll be taking care of the chat. So if you've got any questions, um, let me know and I will, I will do my best to fit them into the conversation. Um, okay, let's try to call Gabby. Fingers crossed that this works everybody because you know technology always scares me and I just can only hope that it I kind of like the Skype song. It's kind of a great song. <gasps> Beautiful Gabby, hang tight and I'm going to switch over the screen so that we see hopefully a dual shot of you and I, but we're just going to give the computer a little second to catch up with this. Um, I see you. Can you see me? Excellent. And uh, my little e-cam here is just... It, it shows our dual screen and it's showing the big blue S for Skype. And I think it will work momentarily. I think it's just sometimes a little bit slow. Um, while we're waiting, tell me how you're doing. I see you. You're beautiful. It took me a while, but you know, I'm there now and one day at a time. I'm so sorry, Gabby. I just, uh, I just realized I could hear you, but the people oh. couldn't hear you and now <laughs> they can hear you and you still look fabulous. And uh, thanks June for letting us know. Hi June and Madeline and oh my gosh. Okay. We hear you now, Gabby, and they're giving me the thumbs up. We hear you. So start again and tell us how are you doing i am i'm doing okay uh i think like everyone else i'm just finding a new way to uh live my life and structure my days um i think uh at the beginning i spent a lot of time just adjusting and making peace with the situation that we're all in and um, you know, and here we are. So now, now I feel like that investment of time of like just acknowledging the moment that we're in is paying off because I don't know, the days go by like reasonably peacefully with like minimal anxiety, existential, you know, moments. Yeah, that's 
that, that is good to hear. I'm glad. And I know that we've all, as you and I were talking about this yesterday, we all have our ups and downs. Um, I definitely had a, a down yesterday. But this is a super up day because we're getting to do this. Yeah. Um, so uh, everybody who is watching, I just want to take a quick moment to say that um, Gabby not only is a dear friend of mine and a, and a colleague and a fellow artist, um, but but as everybody in the world, she uh, and Nathan Bue, her her hubby and partner, have been hit by this um, by this lack of gigs, lack of work, cancellations of pretty much pretty much everything, and so uh, one of the things that we hope to do is to send. If, if you are willing, if you are able to, any amount of donation over in their direction. Literally, it's, you know, paying groceries and rent because both Nathan and Gabby, as full-time Lindy Hop teachers, um, their, all of their work uh, was taken away. And uh, I think they've been creative and probably, I don't know what your exact financial situation is. I'm sure you have some savings. But um, let, me, let me very quickly, if it's okay with everyone, uh, I'm going to just share my screen super quick and uh, hopefully you guys can see this beautiful picture of Gabby which we're going to talk about a little bit later and I hope that that is working. Um, can you guys see that? If anybody is watching, will you let me know? Yep. And Let's see, I'm not hearing anything from anybody in the comments as to whether or not this is uh, viewable, but basically um, it's just uh, Gabby's Venmo link and her PayPal link. Um, if that is, well, I hope that worked. I'm not sure if that worked. Oh, we did, but it's now a blue screen. Hmm. June, what would I do without you? Nick, thank you. Cheren, thank you so much for your technical help. Um, well, nope. Yep, Christine just saw the blue screen. Okay, you guys are amazing. What would we do without you? Seriously, if you weren't watching, I'd have no idea what was going on. Oh, technology. Okay, well then we'll just use our verbal powers by saying, um, if there is any possibility that you guys want to donate uh, to Gabby, then Venmo is the best way. And that is uh, just Venmo uh, at Gabby Cook. Uh, and I think PayPal is also an option. Is that true, Gabby? That's true as well. And, it could uh, be, and that could or be Gabrielle. Nathan and I oh, sorry. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. Just I uh, just wanted to share that we're extremely grateful and we know that it's a difficult time for a lot of people. So um, any, any thoughts or contributions are kindly accepted and we're all just trying to get through this together. Thank, yes, exactly. Um, so, so thank you, everybody out there, if there are any uh, possibilities. Um, so, Gabby, let's talk about this super fun topic. Uh, we basically, we basically want to talk about how we make good shapes for dance and, uh, and how it translates into photography. Um, you have done some pretty spectacular photo shoots, uh, most recently, I think, with Jerry Almonte. Yeah, do you want to tell us anything about that? Yeah, I do. And I also got to say, like, I love talking about this with you because you are the queen of beautiful shapes and lines in your dancing and in photos. And so this is a, a sort of an opportunity for me to get to ask you what you do and and all your tricks and and, uh, and trade secrets. Um, so so thank you. Uh, yes. Um, uh, Jerry uh, Almonte, who lives in uh, Washington, D.C., um, and I have uh, done a couple uh, photo shoots together. He is an incredible photographer. Um, he shoots a lot of live events. Um, if you've seen any photos from ILHC, it's probably his photo. Uh, he's just an amazing all-around dance photographer, um, dance including Lenny Hop and other dances. And yeah, we had uh, we had some time recently in Baltimore, so uh, so we took some really great photos. And he's a he's a really talented guy. Um, I don't know if anything is pulled up, but I am. If there's anything for me to talk about in particular, yeah, I'm gonna. Um, I know oh. this is dangerous, everybody, but I'm gonna try to share my screen one more time, in the in the hope that we can see some of these things. Let's see. 
Um, okay, so we do have here, I don't, I think people are able to see that it's Venmo at Gabby Cook and it's PayPal at Gabriella Cook at Gmail. And then I'm going to do one more thing and I'm going to try to see if we can pull up. Ooh, I'm going to try and see if we can pull up a photo of Gabby uh, that Jerry just took. There we go. I think we can see that. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, so Gabby, I know that you can't see it. I know that you can't see this, but I believe everybody else can see this. This is a photo that uh, we used for the promotion of this that Jerry took. Um, it's the one where your legs are crossed and do um, you want to tell us at all about this pose or these lines or the photo shoot? Every time I'm in a situation like that, I'm just thinking about how to how to um, use my use my chest and my center and my back to support to support my my shoulders and my body. And then, oh hey Nathan, Nathan came back home. <laughs> oh, that's super awesome, hi, Nathan. We don't so, uh, see him right now because we're still looking at your photo. But hi, Nathan. There's a you're, faint you're, hello in the background. You're great. You're great. Um, so, so this photo, you were saying that you're always trying to hold your center and your back and arms. And did did this particular pose come from uh, any inspiration? Um, not in particular. I think that that shape just belongs to a family of shapes that uh, relate to sort of action, the sort of preparation for a turn or the end of a turn. Um, I do like having the, the arms open wide and imagining that I'm sort of holding space out in front of me like it's um, like it's physical. Um, I think sometimes people get in um, and my very serious uh, cheerleader friends will have to excuse me, but we get into like kind of blank cheerleader mode when our hands are just randomly in the air. But when you actually imagine you're holding something or sort of holding the air or water or fabric that the arms have a little more purpose. Um, so that's certainly what's going on here uh, in this in this photo. That's a great uh, that's a great imagery for for dancers to think about. They're holding something. You said like your arms are in water, or you're holding a beach ball, or so that there's this energy, especially all the way through the fingertips. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, well, Gabby, one more kind of quick question. Um, you know, we're having this talk because it's fun, but why why do we think it's so important to make good lines? And why do we think it's important to talk about f dance photos at all? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is something that I pondered after you you brought up the idea of this discussion. Um, you know, in short, you know, dance dance photography is is really a sport that's it's out there for whoever wants it. If you're a photographer, do it. If you want a nice photo of you, do it. If you are going to teach at some weekend somewhere, you should probably have a nice photo of you. But um, the way I think it relates to everybody is uh, it's a great check-in to see like the way you uh, the the way your dancing looks. You know, dancing is ultimately a visual medium. You know, when I when when I you know see your dancing, it's that I see it. You know, that's that's what it is that I'm perceiving. And I know that sounds like so over the top obvious, but we just in our classroom settings we talk so much about the way it feels or the creative component and that's all valuable um i mean of course that's the creation of it uh but in terms of the product that you the dancer are creating it's visual so photography tells us a lot that we can't get from looking in a mirror like how does your posture look uh how are you holding your neck how are you holding your ankles? Um, usually when we're using our eyes to look into the mirror, we're looking at something in particular. Um, but a photo shows us the whole picture. It's You see all of you all at once. And uh, that can be some really um, helpful feedback if you're looking to improve your dancing. Um, even the way it feels sometimes relates to uh, a visual. You're like, oh, my arm looks like that. Maybe that, that's why it doesn't feel great. 
Um, well, Gabby, so this, is a, this is a perfect, perfect segue into, um, I'd like to show, so in preparing for this, Gabby sent me a couple of inspirational photos. And I think what you just said there about, you know, learning about how the way something feels, this is a great segue to looking at an Eleanor Powell photo that you sent to me. Uh, let me see if I can uh, pull this up. Oh, yes, here we go. Okay, so. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, hi, Vienna. Oh, I miss you guys so much. Uh. Yeah. So this is when like a little shorty tries to make a photo of like the, the got, you know, one of the many like great, great hoofers of, you know, of the, you know, tap, tap jazz era. Oh, she's, you know what, they're there, I'll tell you something. Not everybody needs to like stage a photo shoot, but there's a lot to learn from just trying to replicate a shape that someone's making. So, um, yeah, this is a photo that uh, that I feel like I I made a lot of observations about the sort of hinge of the upper and lower body, about the way she's holding her foot. Um, notice that she's not kind of making an extreme um, bevel or sort of a balletic shape with the foot there. Um, now, I think that the ways in which I I tried to succeed is the way the the upper body, the I guess left side of the body. Oh my god, I'm so bad at motor skills. Ah, this is what happens when I don't dance for three weeks. Um, the the, the raised shoulder. Um, I feel like I got a lot from learning how to. Play. Um, I think uh, what I learned after doing the photos and seeing it is that the angle of the photographer, which you can probably tell is below where she is, does change what the photo looks like. And that just wasn't in the cards for this particular setting. Um, but gosh, yeah, if you, gotcha. there's just so much to learn from just yeah. recreating a shape. Well, well, Gabby, I just think that that is a, um, I think that that's a really stunning picture. Um, Sorry, I was hearing uh, or I was seeing in the comments once again that sometimes our audio is going in and out. Um, and bummer. I, I'm checking the audio levels now and it looks like everything is good. And uh, forget. Yeah, exactly. Very nice, Gabby. Forgive me, folks watching, if there is some muting uh, back and forth problems. Sometimes as I change the screens, uh, the, the settings change and I'm trying my best to doctor that up. Um, I totally appreciate hearing from you in the comments if you let me know how things are going. Um, but uh, we're back on our duo screen right now and uh, Gabby, I just, I think that was a super cool example of you taking inspiration from the Eleanor Powell pose and then replicating it. And, uh, and I, I just think that that's a great starting point in terms of analyzing what makes good dance photos and how do they, how then can we replicate it? Um, can I, um, can I ask you, I'm going to show another example, which I believe is, um, Eartha Kitt. Yeah. Oh, you sent, this photo. Yeah, you sent me this photo and, um, hold on, let me pull it up and I'm really hoping that uh, as I share this screen, we'll still be able to be heard. Let me check our audio settings and say something, Gabby. 
I'm saying things. Man, I wish I had a hand sign person behind me uh, who's wearing a mask and staying six feet away from me because that would be hilarious. <laughs> well, we're, we're looking right now at the Eartha Kit photo. Do you want to tell us anything about this photo and why you like it? And have you ever tried to replicate it? I've never tried to replicate it. Um, I, I mean, hmm, actually, that's a good question. I have, fo I, have, I have photos that I love because they have the same energy. I, um, so every time before I do a photo shoot, I, I do some research. I fill my eyes and I fill my brain with imagery that, that me. And, um, you know, it's really easy to kind of get into like a world of like just putting your body in a position, but really, we're here to capture movement and I love this photo. It just gives me a feeling. It's like the definition of fierce. Um, also Eartha Kitt, an incredible singer, performer, comedian, dancer. Um, she, you know, her career really peaks after the swing era, um, but just an incredible human being. Um, and, um, it just, it just makes me, it reminds me that like your spirit is big, you know, and then your body is just like the pencil point that, that gets to express it, you know? So I, I love that Gabby. I completely agree. The other thing that really struck me about that particular photo is that she is in extreme movement. And um, I think June actually said something earlier. I think the lighting angles are also uh, very different in the two shots. He was talking about uh, your photo and the Eleanor Powell photo. Um, mm. but yeah, lighting and angle makes such a huge difference to what the body looks like. That's why, you know, it's a team effort in terms of who the photographer is. But this particular shot of Eartha Kitt, I mean, when you look at it, she she looks like she is in an extreme gesture of kick or swing or turn. And the fact that that photo was just caught at that moment heightens how incredible it is. So um, I love it. I also, I don't think I'd ever seen a photo of Eartha Kitt moving like that. So I was really, I was really struck and educated by, the, by that. Um, I want to jump over now. Let's see. The next one that you sent me was... Tell us about Clarksdale Juke Joint. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, uh, this is one of my favorite photos. This is a, a photo that I came across of, of Lenny Hoppers of the Swing Era, um, you know, doing, doing a search. Um, by the way, you know, regardless of, uh, you know, how how you how you see your progress as a dancer i really since we're since we're all at home i really encourage anyone who's who loves this genre to just sit and just do a google image search of like swing era dancers or go to um getty images um this is a photo that i came across in a search like that and i love how it's i mean this is another candid right like these these last two were like photos taken while people are in action. It's like, as the kids say, it's mood. It's just a mood. There, there's like so much going on. It's a, it's a picture of an evening. Uh, the woman in front with her, with her boots looks like she's just about to like sort of dig into the ground with her, with her body weight and the guy behind her. There's like, there's such a relationship that feels so human. And maybe I'm saying that because we in the swing dance world have created so much technique around dance postures like one hand holding or one hand on the back. Um, uh, yeah, it's just a mood. It's it's a party and also people in the background. It just it just tells you a lot about what was going on and and yeah, I just, I love the way they look. I love the way his uh, jacket is like sort of just flying off his shoulder there, um, that they're, they have a lot of focus and intention in their face, but they're looking down like they're having this internal experience. Um, yeah. Sam Coleman is in the back with his uh, plaid ah, jacket. Ha, ha. <laughs> That's Absolutely. an insight just to New Yorkers because plaid is like, plaid, plaid jacket is, is like Sam Coleman's domain. Anyways. Well, you know, on that note, Gabby, I, I, I can't help but draw connections between dance photography and fashion. Of course. Um, and I, I feel like, I kind of feel weird about this topic because a lot of times when we think of fashion, 
we always think of like super, super, you know, beyond uh, normal, skinny, tall women. And there's a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of issues, I think, with with the the ideal physique and body that people are, are not comfortable with, nor should they be, because it's really unrealistic. Um, but taking it away from from the unhealthy body types, you know, potentially, and looking actually at fashion like fabric and cloth and patterns and the way fabric flows, I think that makes a huge difference in movement and in photography. And I just, I can't help but think that the two are very much related. Um, there's, there's a couple of pictures that we have. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of jumping around in our timeline right now, but um, it might be a good opportunity to, ah, let me see if I can share. Gabby has an incredible Pinterest board. And, Remember, um, Pinterest, it still exists. It still <laughs> exists. And so uh, maybe we can, um, at some point after all of this is done in the comments, maybe Gabby can add the link to that. Um, I'm not going to worry about that right now because I'm afraid I'll mess something up. <laughs> I can pop it in there while you're doing your thing. Oh. Technology. Oh, no, I just realized I was muted that whole time, everybody. So sorry. Okay, I think you can hear me now, and let's start all over again. Um, this is an example of Gabby's Pinterest board, and hopefully we can share this link. Maybe Gabby will share that in the comments. Um, this is incredible. This photo here of these two women that are in extreme high heels, I think it's definitely taken out of a fashion catalog of sorts. And, you know, we're just clearly seeing dance through them. Um, there's a lot of really epic, beautiful poses here that are, I think, heavily influenced by the clothing and the fabric that they're wearing. Like this one over here is just incredible um, of the dancer. And uh, there's one in here that literally lays out, look at the shapes in the body that it lets you, um, kind of draw modern art pictures that relate to dancers. Um, so Gabby, is this something that we could maybe put in the comments after the fact at some point you're willing to uh -oh, share with it's, everybody? It's already out there. You're on it, you're on it, amazing. I could look at this all day. Um, oh my God. What are, um, you know, if you guys are watching in the comments, would you would you tell us what are some details or elements that you think make incredible dance photography or lines in general. Um, that would be, that would be lovely to just see like, what are the things that are your favorites? What are the things that pop out? Oh, see, there's all this fabric, all of this movement. I, I love it. While we, um, oh, I, yeah. I, threw a, I went through a Louis uh, Fuller phase, and uh, she is a uh, turn of the century dancer um, who is uh, uh, interested in the use of fabric. And uh, there's some early film tests of her, and it's like just this enormous, like a parachute. Um, actually, I'll, I'll I'll add two additional um, dancers that I think are worth looking up. Um, one is old, and one is very very new. Um, one is Isadora Duncan, who is a dancer, uh, a pre-modern dancer who precedes the swing era. And um, if you're looking at my Pinterest board and you see any sort of collection of women's bodies and they're ballet-ish, but there's a sort of looseness about them. Um, they're either Margaret Morris dancers, who's a contemporary of Isadora Duncan or Isadora Duncan dancers. And um, there's a very uh, 
sort of muse-like pastoral quality that I had never been introduced to um, as, as a young dancer coming through like studio styles um, that I think bears a lot in, in common with swing dancers or like swing era dance styles. So Isadora Duncan. And then the other dancer is not a dancer. He's a visual artist. His name is Nick Cave. And no, not the musician, but Nick Cave is a is an artist who creates these incredible costumes these uh these sort of objects that you wear and it is more material than person and uh there are these films uh you know demonstrations of movers in the costumes that uh if you want to see movement just manifest uh, i would suggest that you search nick cave not nick cave and the bad seeds that guy's great too uh but nick cave the contemporary artist i got you nick cave we will look that up and add it um shannon varner hi shannon shannon also suggested am i saying it right loey fuller i'm not, yes I've, Lois yeah, Fuller, right. Lois and Shannon Fuller. also said fire dance. Um, Natasha's going nuts. She's just so inspired and loving this. We love you, Natasha. Um, Natasha. Nick also, Philly Nick says, when someone's in the air and you can see the body or the clothing just floating. Yes. You mean flying? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and then let's see, June is saying, sorry, most of the things that pop into my mind are all the awesome photos using old photo tech. Yeah. I mean, I think something about old photography is that maybe because the technology was a bit more simple and you couldn't Photoshop or do, you know, too many fancy things, it really meant that the subject, the person, the, you know, the lighting, the fabric had to be phenomenal. <gasps> Cheren, yes, you said intention. Oh, this is a perfect segue and I hope the technology works. In addition to kind of connecting photography of dance to fashion photography, which is clothing, fabric, and movement. Cheren, you reminded me, I think so much of it has to do, she said, intention. I think it's a little bit almost sometimes like acting. I think that in order to take a really fabulous photo, one of the things that is so amazing or alluring is the emotion or the feeling in that moment. Gabby, you you already mentioned this with Eartha Kitt and about her intensity, her fierceness, her piercing focus in that moment. Um, mm. I want to try to share my screen again. So everybody cross your fingers. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, we're going, we're going under a bridge. We're going under a bridge. Um, bridge. This is Catherine Dunham, a yeah. clip from YouTube. And gosh, I hope that this plays. My poor little computer is like so overloaded. I want you guys to check out Catherine Dunham's emotional content, even though this is a dance movement. She takes off her, her headpiece because she's just saying, I can't deal with that. And hold on, I'm gonna pause it and try to start it again because I'm wondering if it's a bit too much. Oh, maybe, oh, oh, give me a second. Oh, there's so much going on here. Patience, let's try this one more time. I should be patient and just let the little computer do its thing or not. Um, anyways, while I'm hoping that the computer will play for us, Again, this is Catherine Dunham, who was a famous African-American dancer and choreographer. This is specifically from um, the Ballet Creole in 1952. And it was done at the Cambridge Theater in London. And, you know, she's just absolutely stunning. I can turn off the volume here and... You know, maybe it's, maybe it's not too possible. We'll try one more time. There we go. So she's making incredible shapes. She is gorgeous. Um, and, you know, even the shape that she's making there while she's twirling, there's the fabric again with her skirt, you know, making a point out of that. But you see the emotion and the feeling and in this particular ballet, she's supposed to be tempted by this evil, you know, voodoo, voodoo doctor. That's the guy that you saw earlier. 
And we just see, again, talk about dancing and making lines with your body, but the emotional quality and then the drama. And of course, we see then they, they start to fight. So um, I, I hope that that came across. Uh, I hope that that was visible. I'm not sure, but I think people saw at least enough of it that you could go back and look at it on your own. And um, it's, just a, it's just a beautiful example of a dancer in a costume that is emoting. And we're not seeing really particularly fast body movements. We're not seeing a lot of fierce dancing, but we're seeing such an intention and such a, um, an emotional moment. And I think if you were to capture any of those, you would be, you'd be pulled by what was happening in that photo because of, as Chiren said earlier, the intention. Yeah. Let's see, how are the comments going? Yeah, Chiron says, yes. Oh, Joe Demers, hello, good to see you. Colorado in the house. He says, authenticity of feeling is so important. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's, that's the thing that we are, I mean, it's performing, it's acting. I, um, I'd love to know if in the comments that worked out with the video quality, I know it was a bit choppy, but there's, there's two more videos that I want to try to see. Gabby, are you able to see any of this in your other? Um, I seem to be stuck on a screen that says something along the lines of click to exit full screen, uh, but I also could be delayed a little bit. Okay, yes, you might, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to try to show this. This is Sid Charisse and Fred Astaire from the 1957 uh, film Silk Stockings. And uh, basically, if this freezes on you guys, I just want you to know that at any moment of it freezing, they look fabulous. Um, let's see if <laughs> we can play just a little bit of this. You could always toss the link into, uh, oh, it worked. Okay, cool. Thanks, Ron. Uh, you could always toss the link into the chat. Uh, uh, I'm also, there's an echo now. Uh, go ahead, Evita. You know what is so impressive about this clip to me, by the way? All right, well, I am going to, I'm going to go ahead and stop this because, whoops. I'm going to go ahead and stop this because I feel like, oh, hold on. Patience, everybody, patience. Thank you so much for your patience. Okay, um, I, I'm going to pause that or, or stop that because I feel like everybody can kind of go back and look at it on their own. Um, it's sort of funny if it did freeze on you at any point, which I'm sure it did, um, we can look at the pose that they're in and it's, it's going to be beautiful. Um, uh, so, so sorry about that. I was trying things. Um, Gabby, you know, you had talked to me a little bit about taking stills from video to use as part of your uh, advertising for certain Gatsby entertainment things. Do you want to tell us anything about that? Oh, yeah. Just um, that if you have an opportunity. Hey, Evita, there's an echo. I don't know if that can be remedied. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Um, I'm not hearing an echo on my side. If anybody in the comments is hearing an echo, will you let us know? It could potentially have to do with your screen and your YouTube watching. Okay, cool. I'm not, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not hearing an echo on my end. 
great. I'll just power through despite the awkwardness. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to offer that um, if you are in a position where you're looking for uh, either photos of inspiration or you've done a, you would like some nice photos of yourself, that uh, taking a video of yourself, if you've got a nice enough camera, sometimes just your your camera phone works just as well. Take a video of yourself and, and uh, capture yourself moving and then grab some stills. Um, uh, and, and Evita brought up the uh, Gatsby Entertainment thing. If you go to any of the recent Gatsby Entertainment photos um, on the Instagram page or the Facebook page, I'll put in links. Those all are stills from a photo shoot that we did, a video shoot, because we just didn't have a photographer. And I was extremely pleased with how they came out. They're dynamic and they're full of action and they're all about, you know, just like that Eartha Kit photo, they're just about the body barreling through space. Um, so, you know, if you if you are a rare person that's like, I need a good dance photo of me for Christmas cards, uh, then I would encourage you to take a video of yourself and grab stills if you can. I, uh, I love that, Gabby. Um, that is a huge, huge helpful tip for so many people. And, and a lot of people are probably afraid of taking video of themselves. And you can even watch back scrolling or slow motion and you kind of like experience the same idea of, oh, that's the shape I make when I'm in that, that step or that movement. Um, Gabby, can you also, would you be willing to, to give us any tips or tricks that you have specific to uh, I've got here lengthening your lines. Now, I know that we're both on the shorter side, so lengthening our Already. lines. Already. Yeah, that, I mean, that's something that we want to do just because we, we might feel like we're not as tall as we wish we were. But every dancer kind of looks for lines or those shapes. So do you have any tips or tricks that you can tell us? Uh, yeah, um, you know, first off, I'll just say that uh, all of the things I've gathered are just experiential um, from my individual life as a dancer. Um, I talk to anyone who is a photographer who's shooting dancers or bodies and lots of photographers will have tips for you. Um, but uh, yeah, some of the go to um, and that is true whether you're taking photos or you just want to improve your dancing, any photographer will give you good tips on how to improve your lines as a mover. Um, but yeah, um, so, you know, if you find yourself, if you're, if you're looking to improve your lines, um, one of the things that you want to do is you want to just find some space in your, in your chest and connect not only with the space up here, but with your back opening up, opening up the space right here. What feels really cranked back in the shoulders might just look like you're sitting there normally. So I guess if you're sitting at your computer, you don't even have to stand up. You can kind of put your hand right below your, right, uh, right at your collarbone, at your sternum. And just like a bird, you can just imagine opening up your wings, you know, all the way from the center of your chest, all the way to the shoulders. And if you want to go even further, you can release your hands out behind you. And that is just a good way to wake up that part of the body. Um, so that's, that's my kind of first piece of advice is just open up, open up this space sort of between the, between the, the shoulders. Um, and don't discount all the work that your back can do to hold you up, all the strength that we have back here. Um, my second piece of advice has to do with the way you hold your head. Um, now go ahead and, and make your fingers like this and put them at the, at the points of your jaw. And I just want you to imagine both pressing up and then dropping your chin. Uh, and if you're like me and you spend a lot of time at your computer, you probably have developed a, just a gradual, a gradual lurch, you know, like like we all do. But this reminder to sort of push up. Yeah, right there to push up here and then bring the bring the chin down is going to bring the head where it should be and lengthen the back of the neck, which also tends to engage a little bit for me in the chest here everybody everybody's body feels different based on based on your body and and how you're connected to it so just opening up in that space is going to be really helpful for 
for, you know, any dancing you do, any portrait you take. Um, yeah. Yeah. Those are, those are some quick go-to tips that are physical. That's amazing, Gabby. I, I think that's a huge one. The, the neck, the chin, the shoulders, and thinking from your back, that's a big deal too. I, I remember um, my mentor and teacher, Ryan Francois, he told me, you need to dance with your back. You need yeah. to think about your back. And I had no idea what he meant by that. I was, I was just so perplexed. I was like, I, what do you mean? I, but, but basically the things that you're saying, which is that kind of strength or holding in the back and that pulling and kind of also another way of saying it would be opening up the front, like you said, is, is very key. Um, Gabby, you had also mentioned to me that there are some things we can choose to wear <laughs> yeah. that could help us accentuate our lines. And again, this wraps back around to uh, photography, dance, lines, shapes, kind of having to do with what we wear. Yeah, yeah. So um, Gabby's general recipe for how to look longer um, is uh, maybe there are things that, that you already know. Um, try to wear uh, one color. Try to just wear, uh, you know, just, just one color or one shade of color. Um, another idea is to wear uh, V-neck shirts. They, they sort of elongate the space from the top of the forehead. Um, they kind of frame your chest. Um, uh, another suggestion uh, worth making if you're a person that wears shoes that have uh, variable heights, um, that a, a heel is always better than a platform. Um, while both might make you taller, like if you did an inch mark on the wall with your, with your mom, um, a, uh, an actual heel, like a, a raked space is going to, uh, lengthen your leg line, uh, in a way that a, a thick platform, uh, will not, um, and, uh, also, you know, life is, um, Life is about contrast and so is fashion too. So, you know, wearing items that uh, contrast both either tight fitting or loose fitting um, can help to accentuate the, the beauty of the fabric, the beauty of uh, movement itself. I think someone that really, um, that really understands the sort of value of sort of oversized uh, clothing um, is Christian, Christian Fromel always ha has a great collection of jackets and it's always got just a really great sway to it where you can see sort of his body moving within the jacket. And sometimes if I see like a suit or a dress, that's just like all tight all around, like, uh, like armor, you know, like, uh, like the kind of stuff that, um, you know, that you associate with, uh, um, like office wear, um, like a, like an office suit is sometimes it just gets a little stiff, you know, a little still. So I guess don't be afraid to wear things that drape and hang and move, even if they're bigger than you, because, uh, we're talking about fashion photography in the context of dance. Um, so you'll be a mover. So don't be, a, don't be afraid to like move your keep around. I, I love that. I resonate with that so much. And I, I think I err more on the side of drapey, flowy, comfy, <laughs> comfortable stuff. But then there's always that problem of tripping within your own fabric. I, have, you ever, have you ever caught your foot or your heel in oh, a dress? Yeah. yeah. Um, before I was a swing dancer, I, was a, I, was, I went out and did tango and I was living in New York. And uh, my heel to in a baleo totally caught the edge of my skirt and just brought that skirt down. And that was a great day. <laughs> oh, no. The, well, fun um, the fun time. Yes, it's a good time. Happened. Yeah, it's a good time. Well, day. Gabby, I have, I have an experiment that I want us to try, which is okay. um, I want the two of us to try to create a pose. It could be whatever pose we want. And then the other person is going to kind of give some coaching or, or tips or advice, um, as well as, you know, the people who comment uh, at home can as well. And then we're going to have a countdown. Whoever is watching right now can do a screen grab or a screenshot. Oh, gosh. And we're going to, I don't know, should we go five, six, seven, eight, or should we go one, two, three? Yeah. 
we should well, do I think five, we six, go seven, eight. Six, seven, eight. We'll have to know if we're going on eight or on one. Let's go on count one and we'll count five, six, seven, eight. Boom. That's the picture. I love it. I love it. Okay. Now, um, would you, uh, would you mind going first? Yeah. Okay. Wait. So what am I doing? Tell me. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to position your screen so that uh, you're the big screen now. We see you large. Oh, look at your beautiful plants. Yeah, yeah, plants, plants. Oh, Gabby, you look great. Okay, so you're going to just back up uh, kind of to where the the shelves are or whatnot. Perfect. We see all of you. You're gorgeous. And uh, you're going to do a pose. And then I'll count you off. We'll go five, six, seven, eight. We're going to hit the, po the photo on count one. Oh, God. I should have studied. I should have prepared something. Okay. Oh, no, okay. no, no. It's much more fun to just, like, not know what's going to happen. Awesome. Okay. I've got my camera ready. And um, actually, we should do a practice shape first. So show us what your shape is that you are considering. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay, so ready? We're gonna go five, six, a five, six, seven, eight, one. I took a photo, it was amazing. Uh, give, us, give us one more shot, practice another pose. All right, waiting for the count. Oh, okay, well, the, oh, show, us, show us the shape first. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. That's gorgeous. Can you come a little closer to the camera? Come a little. Because, because you're ducking down. Shh. Amazing. Oh, Gabby, that's gorgeous. Okay. And I'm going to get my, hold on. I got to get my Very shift like command Olympic. for yeah. photo ready. Throw. My photo is ready. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Five, a five, six, seven, eight, one. Oh, that's so pretty. I love it. I love it. All right. Those are, okay, so those are like classic, beautiful. Those are already in your body. You know that they're gorgeous. I just realized as I, I made that, that offhand joke about, you know, the discus thrower and like, you know, Greek art. But yeah, that's the other thing. You want to make good lines? Like, go look up like all of art, like the history of sculpture, like Rodin, you know. Absolutely. You can time. Gabby, you know, Natasha also just wrote, she says, I know that it is controversial to say that ballet is like a foundation for dancers, but how significant do you think it is when training one's body for any stage performance and photo shoots? That's, that's a pretty- Oh my God, I know, I know. I'm so, I'm so with you, Natasha. It is, because I think we're, there's a really important transformation about the role of ballet in, in dance as a whole. Um, and that said, I benefit I, Gabby, uniquely benefit from having a really heavy foundation in ballet because that was the first dance that I trained in professionally as a kid um, at San Francisco Ballet for seven years. So um, do you have to do it to be a dancer of repute? No. Um, if you like it, should you pursue it? Yes. You know, like it's uh, it's the the practice of of learning to hold the body in port de bra and the, the sort of relationship between the torso and the soft arms, extremely, extremely useful for me in my life as a dancer and as a Lenny Hopper. Um, so if it, if it is of interest, I, I, would, uh, I would honor that excitement and uh, take a dance class online or in person. I love it, Gabby, I love it. Um, should I try this uh, photo thing? Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hit a pose, and um, I want you to actually coach me. Like, I want you to tell me what what you think. You can see me. Okay. <laughs> you know, funny funny enough, um, because we were talking about this, and one of the things you said was to wear all one color. So there you go. I also specifically chose to wear sort of. Um, like a halter top because that's more flattering on my body because I'm super wide or broad shouldered and very square. So even though it's not a V, this still does kind of cut my body to make me look almost more of like a, an, like a pillar. 
um, that, that, that narrows up here. And then um, it's flowy fabric, which I like, and it's comfortable. And uh, it brings in my waist. Otherwise, I would look like a marshmallow with toothpick arms and legs. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what shape. OK, here's, here's my first shape thought. Ready? It's going to be something crazy like, like that. Hold on. Okay, but now what, what could I do to make this better? Oops, so sorry, Gabby. Hold on, hold on. There we go. Now talk. Okay. Um, I First off, one thing that I've learned from photo shoots when I do that pose, if you have to hold it for a while, don't be afraid to bend your standing leg. Okay, like, check it, it out. Like, if we're going we're gonna to make this shape together... I don't know okay. if you know my head. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus the screen yeah. on you. Can Ooh, you see? Yes, okay, I see you. You're beautiful. Right. So first off, if your knee is going directly at the camera, I'm just gonna put my leg in leg in the space. The difference between it being here and here is not that visually different. So if you're if you have to hold this pose, which is a difficult pose, you can practice bending your standing leg. So that's just a survival tip number one. Don't be afraid to bend your standing leg. Survival tip number two with a back attitude photo is your butt needs to do all the work. Your butt needs to like be really active and really like clench and hold the leg up there as though it were like on a shelf. <laughs> okay. I love this. Let me try with those notes. I'm going to try with you. Okay. Okay. Ready? So I'm slightly, tip number one, I'm slightly bending my supporting leg so that it's not so hard. Yes. And, great angle. Uh, I'm going to make my butt do all the work. The butt is doing all the work. And okay. Now we need a, we, oh, that's gorgeous, Gabby. Okay, wait, yeah. I'm going to, hold on, I'm going to put us duo oh. screen instead of one larger than the other, so we're both equal now. And then okay. those of you at home, can you take a screenshot of this? Okay, oh, ready? Natasha. <laughs> okay, Gabby, you ready? Yeah. I don't know if this is going to work because there's a slight delay in what they're watching, so let's try to hold it for as long as we can. Ready? I, that's what, good survival. Okay. Okay, supporting leg is bent. My butt's doing all the work. And if anybody oh. is at home and can make this, we're going to go five, six, five, six, seven. And we're holding, holding, holding. Maybe somebody takes a screenshot. Okay, that hurts. I can't do that anymore. That's so hard. Oh, God. Oh, oh great. I don't oh. know if my butt was doing all of the work. I think my, my back was doing all of the work. Tony. I gotta say, hi you, Tony. You know what Tony I love just about joined us. Your hi Tony. Oh, go ahead. All right, tell me, tell me, Gabby, what were your thoughts? You know what I love about your halter top? I okay, I'm kind of wearing a halter thing. I never wear halter things. It was just form fitting, and I thought it was right for the occasion. I never wear them. You wear them. You look like a million bucks. And you know what I just realized while you were doing that is like you have like the longest arm. You have the most beautiful. Fucking stretch Armstrong, long ass arm. You should be in Swan Lake because that's, that's an arm. And I never thought about how like uh, a halter really gives you that because it, it adds all of You're this, right. all of this meat to your arm. Well, well, Joe Demers just said, get one, Gabby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm on it. Um, yeah. Actually, uh, all joking aside, very seriously, I completely embrace my spirit animal, which is the mush, uh, not the mushroom. <laughs> That's also funny. A marshmallow. I think when I think of myself in a lovingly, in a loving but silly way, I think of myself as like just a little square marshmallow. And then I have toothpick arms and toothpick legs, which are quite long in proportion. And so one of my challenges as a, as a dancer making shapes is trying to hold in my center line. So belting it, sucking in my gut, thinking long, like trying to give my lower back, my lower abdominal space. And wow. then, um, and then, yeah, I do enjoy using, uh, the arms and the legs to, to create shape, but it's also one of my problems because, uh, 
if I don't complete the idea, if I just kind of have like a tossed out shape, then it can kind of look a little, eh, eh. maybe. And I don't know, there's a whole nother conversation to be had in terms of, do we throw out the end of a line like, Gah! or do we, do we place the end of a line like, Gah! you know? And right. There's a fine line between starting to look a little too balletic and a little too yeah. much maybe like um, ballroom dancers where they really like versus our jazz dance and our Lindy Hop, which does embrace that kind of flail, throw, toss, freedom of gesture. Do you have any thoughts on that? No, I mean, I think you just, you just said it so well. And I think that, I think, both. It's not an either or. I think there are, there are situations for shapes that feel like they're extremely like sculpted and like you're just in control of like Oh, Gabby, every that's gorgeous. Of it Get, versus, give that to us again. Give that to us again. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is what I get for like following like, you know, ballroom people on Instagram. Um, and versus like, yeah, something that feels like a release, like Charleston, you know, where it's really just about the motion, the sort of work that my center is doing, and then letting the limbs just manifest that motion in, in not as controlled a form. Um, I'd say one example, too, of the throwing it out there is if you're aiming for like a really long line or a really high leg, that's something that I think about when I'm trying to like aim for like a really high kick photo. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a balance. It's a balance of both strength leading into it and then letting go at the very, very end. Um, and yeah, you know, point your foot, damn it. Don't point your foot. It's funny how don't do that. <laughs> I, I, I love it, Gabby. I also have to compliment you look so freaking. Thank you. You're very kind. Damn it. I muted myself again. Damn it. Thanks. Thanks, Chiden. Gosh, this technology stuff is so hard. Thanks, Connie. Thanks, Selena. They're so good. You guys are amazing. I'm so sorry. Sorry. So, so apparently, Gabby, you can hear me and you don't realize when I make the mistake of muting. Bleh. She said really smart things and she gave me some really good tips and I'm going to I'm going to hoard them for myself. No, I'm not. Uh, if it's a, what, a smart, what I said that was, I think what I said that was very important to repeat. I'm so sorry. I forgot to unmute myself is that um, Gabby just looks fabulous. <laughs> Oh, no, we don't need to repeat that. That was a very kind thing to say, but yeah. But, but I mean, not uh, only do you look fabulous, but it, but the, the choice of what you're wearing works beautifully for the body and for lines and for dance. And I think that, that, that I just wanted to say that. Okay, I think you can hear me again. Yes, everybody? Oh, there we go. Shihan hey. said, uh, I went mute from the, oh, from the time I started complimenting Gabby. Okay, well, so what I wanted to do, you guys, was... Um, let me see, are there any other points that we wanted to talk about? There is, um, there's one more thing that I'd like to share if it's possible. Again, everybody cross your fingers and let's see if I can share the screen. Cross the fingers. Um, I want to see if you guys can look at Paul Collins. So this is, Gabby, do you want to tell us just a little bit about you had some other sort of outside the box recommendations for where we can get inspiration for dance. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot, you know, um, in a way it's kind of like follow, follow your bliss, you know, something excites you, you know, just spend the time to just go, like let, let yourself just search and search and search and search. Uh, for me, um, 
you know, illustrators of of the like twenties. Uh, Paul Collin is. I'm sure there's a French pronunciation that is way more beautiful than what I'm saying. Um, but uh, is is a uh, French illustrator, and he's um, uh, famous among other things for um, making illustrations of Josephine Baker. And I th and one thing that I really like about Paul Collin is that he is so abstract. And when you see these illustrations he's made of Josephine Baker, and it's just sort of a leg, and a, and you know he's he's obviously someone who's drawing from you know the world of contemporary art at that moment in time, the sort of like um, early early turn of the century period. Um, so the sense of abstraction it just tells us a lot about like the strength of that line. Um, I feel like I'm just like uh, blathering a little bit. What I'm getting at is looking at any visual representation of swing era dancers that's not literally a photograph, but has more expression, tells us a lot about what people saw when they saw that style of dancing. So Paul Collin is someone worth looking up. Um, also, you know, looking up uh, pinup artists, um, people that drew these sort of like erotic images of women against these like white backgrounds the level of detail and the clarity of the line it's just the the way the woman looks at the telephone or she looks down at her fingernails there's so much like intention in in that uh in that expression so if you're if you're looking for things to look at, I'd suggest I love that. it. I love it, Gabby. I have just recently uh, shared the screen. You had suggested Alberto Vargas, yeah, and and just beautiful lines and beautiful sensual um, ideas of the female body. Really, really gorgeous. And you know, you're you're very right um, in terms of researching what things we want to look at that are inspiring and give us ideas for shapes and lines. It is kind of these imaginary uh, or drawn, fantasized things. Um, I'm also a big fan of comic books. My little brother was like super oh. into Marvel comics and X-Men and Spider-Man and all of that stuff. And uh, when I was a kid, like 12, 13, 14, I would take a piece of paper and I would put it over the comic book and I would sketch out the drawing because uh, I couldn't draw it, but I just wanted to like, you know, be with it. And similarly, comic book bodies, uh, which are literally superhero bodies and poses, um, serve as great inspiration as well. Oh, totally, totally on board with the comic book vibe. Um, yeah, they're like action photos and action shots of the body, so exciting. So let me see, we're, we're definitely over. It's already 4.11 and uh, I'm just terrible at keeping these under an hour. So if anybody's got to go, of course, we love you and thanks for tuning in. But I think the one last thing that I did want to talk about was the possibility of um, two, two people. Um, I wanted to talk about the possibility of making a group shot. So um, is it all right? If I briefly, I have to do this. Is that okay, Gabby? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, let me let me pull this 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 good old gem up. Let's see if I can share this with people. Ta-da! I'm a little so delayed. Like, so you have to tell me which photo that is. That's okay. This is uh this is the ah! court. The quartet, this is Nathan Bue, Gabby Cook, myself, and Michael Jagger. This is uh, circa, circa 2014, 2015, when yep. uh, Gabby recently had moved to New York City and the four of us were putting together uh, the school, Syncopated City uh, Dance Company, and this uh, dance school, and this is because Dance Manhattan had just closed. And so we did this photo shoot with the four of us and I think it's really fun, but I can also uh, critique myself highly in this photo. Uh, I, if I could go back and turn things around, I wouldn't have my back so square to the camera. I would actually uh, angle myself to be more sideways so that I would just look a little bit more trim or, or it would be the more flattering angle of the waist. 
I don't know. How, how do you feel about this photo? I think that both of us have chosen really exciting foot positions. And uh, I, I think the way we're holding the, the non weight bearing leg is very exciting and is very dynamic. Um, I think both the boys have chosen um, really exciting movement oriented poses. And I'll say that this about you, because I can't say it about anyone else, the sense of movement in your hair. Speaking of comic book characters, the movement in your oh. hair and movement in your skirt is extremely dynamic. And it really, it really brings uh, a sense of the moment to the photo. So it doesn't just feel like a still statue, but like an exciting dynamic thing that just happened to be captured on film Aww, and that thanks if you got if you got long hair out there male or female you should you should use it in photos do a do a flippy because uh i always have short hair thank you gabby and i think i think you are killing it you're just killing me with your heels with the choice of clasping your hands and with the side hip bump and the expression yeah. is just it's phenomenal let me show one more shot this is a classic group shot that we took um this, this is the swing out shot of the four of us. Uh, yeah. yep. And, uh, oh yeah, Cheren was saying it's kind of symmetrical. Yes, and, and I wanna talk a little bit about, you know, whether something is symmetrical or asymmetrical, whether something is unified or intentionally different. You know, these are the things that can make it more enjoyable. This picture of the, the two of us, the two couples swinging out, I find it's interesting because Michael and Nathan just hit it on the head looking exactly alike. They came out of this, the factory. <laughs> they came out of the factory. Yeah, I mean, they just, you know, clearly it looks like they, they, they were on the same page. And then, man, I wish I had just moved my hand out ever so slightly to open up like you did. But oh, in no, hindsight... No, no. I think the reason why we did this in truth, everybody watching, is that um, we took these two photos separately and then put them together. And in order to make it easy for Nathan and Gabby to be side by side, no, 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 we did take them together at the same time. Because if I had my left arm reaching out, I would have covered Nathan's face. That's what happened. I love it. Let me say one thing about this photo and what you're yeah. doing with your hands. So the people watching at home, Pointing at the audience in a photo is uh, either 100% incredible or 100% corny move. And only people photogenic like Evita can pull it off because she looks so exciting. I have used this photo for graphic design for marketing materials for Syncopated City. And when I open it up, I'm like, oh, me? Like every time I see this photo and she's pointing at me, she's so engaged looking, the, hair, the wind is under her hair. She's she's kind of got this like graceful, am I casting a spell on you? Am I pointing at you? You know, casual vibe. And I just, I love it to tears and I could never pull it off in a million years. So yeah, that's, you, you that's are, all I got to offer. You are so sweet and very kind. And I, I, I think I'm very much uh, straddling near the, the the comedic cheesy line but thank you so much i try my best oh my that's what we should do so hey everybody everybody at home if you have any time uh you should try to take a photo of yourself pointing at the camera finger guns point one hand and if you can make it look good you have reached evita level you have reached the god level of of uh of being photogenic and charismatic in front of the camera because uh, nobody can do it. So we uh, we offer you, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like watch where you point that thing. Uh, I invite that, you to uh, take a photo of yourself, get your, get your partner, your spouse, your cat, your dog, your chair, and uh, try to take a pointing at the, pointing at the camera photo. And uh, I don't know, Evita, what would be a good place to share that? Just on Facebook in the Syncopated City group? I, I think the best place is, um, so this entire live stream video will remain, it will be, uh, it will be on YouTube for anybody to, to watch again there. It will also be on the Syncopated City um, Facebook page. And I think any other comments uh, can be thrown there. I think photos can be thrown in there. We could even just make like a whole collection of residual photo attempts from this, this whole session. I think that would be hilarious. 
um, Gabby, I, I want to keep talking. I want to like show so many more things and talk about so many more things, but I, I do feel like we're pushing an hour and 20 minutes now, roughly. So, um, uh, really quickly, uh, Ron O'Connor did ask a question, especially Michael, how did he hold that pose in the first photo? The one of all four of us where the guys are sliding and, you know, I don't know. I think he fell a couple of times and uh, I think we took that photo a couple of times and that's a great question about, you know, catching those pivotal moments in photos where you actually can't hold it. Like for example, Gabby, when you've taken some of your, your best high kick photos, oh, isn't yeah. that, I mean, you can't just hold it there, right? They got to catch the top of the, the swing, right? Well, what I hold is a lot lower than, uh, than what I can throw. I gotcha. Um, oh, let's see. I'm looking. Was there anything else that we want? There was so much more I wanted to talk about and show, but I just feel like it'll be a little too excessive in this live stream. Um, I think uh, let's continue to post in the comments, everybody. And and one more time, I just want to remind everybody that um, the, the, the purpose of this is really to just help out. Sorry, I'm looking for I'm looking for a link to post here. Okay, there we go. Um, the, the big purpose of this, everybody, is uh, we're doing these, these fun live streamed sessions with our friends who are also artists of some kind whose work has been really impacted by everything that's going on with the coronavirus. And if anybody has or is comfortable to send any small amount of donation over towards Gabby, this would help her literally buy groceries and pay rents. Uh, she and Nathan Bue together here in New York City because all of their income was completely based on um, live in-person dance related things. So um, you can go to syncopatedcity.com forward slash live. You'll see Gabby's information there written out. And also to say it, uh, Venmo at Gabby Cook and PayPal at Gabriella Cook at gmail.com are all options. Um, Gabby, thank you so much for doing this with me. I, I seriously, I think we could do this again and show more videos and more, more uh, photos because I just, there's so much more that we could talk about. I know, I agree, I totally agree. This is a lot of fun, thank you, Evita. Thank, thank you, Gabby, um, I really, uh, it, it's fun to talk and hang out like this and share creative ideas, even though I can't like go over and hang out with you actually in person. Yeah. One day, one day this will pass and we'll look back at all these exciting and, you know, ingenious solutions we made for all of our lives uh, fondly and with, uh, you know, we'll be impressed by ourselves. Um, thank nice. you everybody um, very much who's who's offered a contribution. Um, uh, we're just we're just all holding on and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing you guys all in person one day. One day soon. Thank you so much, Gabby. Love you. Yeah, I love you look, too. All look right. forward look forward to seeing more photos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. It was good to Bye, chat. Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.